All right, hold on. Let me check how my video's doing. Um, you what? 50k views. <laughs> Hello guys, and welcome back to another Elden Ring video. First off, I just want to say thank you guys all so much for the support on the last Elden Ring video. I never expected a video of mine to blow up like this, especially not the fifth video posted on my channel. So today I'm going to be updating that video, and I'm going to share your guys' suggestions that I saw in the comments as a way to thank you for all the support. But before we get to that, I'm just going to have a quick disclaimer about the channel before we continue. If you don't care, skip to this timestamp, and we'll get started with the Elden Ring content. So, after seeing all the support on the Elden Ring video, I'm obviously grateful for all the support. But the video about Stray that I posted afterward has not garnered this attention. The reason I bring this up is that I want to make sure everyone knows that this isn't going to be a purely Souls-focused channel. Because it seems like most people saw the Elden Ring video, but didn't realize about the Stray video. I'm worried that if people are subscribing only because they think I'm a Souls channel, that they're going to be disappointed if I start making other content. That's not to say that there isn't going to be any more Elden Ring videos, I have plenty in store, and I'm going to make videos about the other Souls games when I finally beat them. So with that all over with, let's take a look at your suggestions. The first suggestion from Droid is that I forgot to mention that the Wing of Estelle shoots a projectile with the heavy attack. I actually didn't know this at the time of the previous video because I rarely use heavy attacks in PvE, especially on curved swords, considering that you don't usually get much of a benefit from doing the heavy attack. So yeah, there is now no doubt in my mind that this weapon should have been the Remembrance weapon. It's faster, the ability is also faster and less risky as it locks you down for less time, and it has a ranged projectile. Terp here says that they find the Bastard Stars has a better ability, but I find it to be less consistent. Look here at the clip. The Bastard Stars does less than the Wing the first time I use it, but the second time it does more than the Wing, but the Wing did the same amount of damage both times I used it. Overall, both are very cool weapons, I'm in no way saying that using Bastard Stars is bad, I'm saying that From really dropped the ball on it, considering that it is the Remembrance weapon, it's not just some random weapon. Anyways. Next up, Alan Ganser suggests the Bolt of Grand Sacks for dexterity builds. And yeah, as you can see, it is a very good weapon. It has a cool design and a useful ability, but I can't help but wish the ability was more unique. I mean, it's just the Lightning Spear incantation, but red. I do find it interesting that it has no faith requirement or faith scaling, as most weapons like this that have an elemental ability require some amount of faith to wield. Overall, if you are a dexterity build, I would highly recommend it. The only downside is that it's the only one of the legendary weapons that you can miss. If you burn the Erd Tree and Leandel becomes the Ashen Capital, it disappears and you have to go into New Game Plus to get one. It's Snorlax suggests the Great Stars for strength builds. This weapon is good, it can have many Ashes of War, and it has innate blood loss. I did find it a little bit generic at first, because one of the main problems that the Ash of War system gives the game is that a lot of weapons are basically the same, but with different damage. I mean, think about, like, the curved swords. All of the ones that you can switch their Ash of War, they might as well be the same weapon, just with a different design and a little bit of a different damage or weight factor, given that they all can have the same set of abilities. Anyways, back on track, this weapon has a unique property that I wasn't aware of until I started testing it out. It restores a small amount of HP with every hit that you land with it. Because of this, I think the best build for it would be the Pyrolate's Charge with Blood Flame Blade. Since Pyrolate's Charge hits so many times, you're going to be building up bleed really fast, especially since the blood loss added by Blood Flame Blade stacks with the blood loss that's already on it, and you're going to be restoring HP every hit. So you're going to be restoring a lot of HP if you manage to hit every hit of the charge. The reason I'm not doing that here is because the market moves around a lot and it would be hard to hit with the charge. So anyways, next up is the Sword of Night and Flame, suggested by Fl... Fleg? Flembeard. This weapon is pretty good, but after it was nerfed, it's never been quite the same. By holding the ability button down, you can then either press R1 
for a shorter range, less damage version of Comet Azur, or press R2 to do this sweeping fire attack. It's still a good weapon even after the nerfs, but I think any Elden Ring player who remembers how OP it used to be has heard more than enough about it. Next up is the God Slayer Greatsword, suggested by Paul Roche. This weapon is very good, it deals heavy damage, and the ability strikes with Black Flame, which drains the HP of the enemy. I really like this weapon, I love the design and the ability, but it can be hard to land it against most bosses as they move around fast. But if you do manage to land that ability, it is very worth it, so I would highly recommend this for Strength and Fate hybrid builds. The only thing about this weapon is, it just kind of makes me sad. Because, if you look at the item descriptions, it says that it was wielded by the Queen of the Godskins before Malaketh killed her. But why did this have to be in the lore? How about instead of Malaketh killing her, she could have been the boss instead of the Godskin duo? Wouldn't that have been much more interesting than just slapping the two of them into one room and making the most hated boss fight in the game? And one of the worst in the entire series? Anyways, Donald McKay says to try the warped axes on a strength build. These weapons are great for strength builds, and the main reason for this is that for some reason, they retain more strength scaling when it comes to infusions. Look here, the lightning infusion will cause strength to lower significantly. As you can see, this other weapon goes from B to an E in strength, but the warped axes only go from a B to a D, so it keeps one additional level of scaling. So if you want to infuse them with elemental damage or status buildup, you're going to keep more of that strength scaling than you normally would. On top of that, the axe moveset is very good. All in all, this is a really great weapon. The only downside is that getting this weapon is really annoying. You have to kill the enemies that wield it, which is not a lot, and it only has a 4% chance of dropping, which seems needlessly small. Anyways, Firewing211 suggests the Meteoric Ore Blade. Basically, the comment says it all. Good base damage, the katana moveset is good, and the ability does AoE damage as well as pulling in small to medium sized enemies, allowing for follow up attacks. It's also great in PvP with the AoE and the gravity, as well as having a unique R2 that is this overhead slam that moves forward. Many players won't be expecting this if they don't know about it. All in all, great weapon and very underrated. I don't see enough people using this. Anyways, Jake Boy suggests Eleonora's Pole Blade. I really like the design and the ability on this weapon, and it can bleed people quite fast due to the Twin Blade moveset having such quick hits. However, I'm gonna be honest, the ability is pretty useless once you make it to late game. The combo causes you to move around a lot, and you can only really land every hit with regular enemies, because the combo seems to work on the basis that the enemy is going to get staggered and moved around with each hit, which works on regular enemies. So this allows the combo to move them into position to get hit by the next attack. But with most bosses, you might hit a few attacks before the boss jumps somewhere else and then you totally miss because it doesn't really have much strafe ability while in the middle of the combo. And then the boss will be able to easily punish you. Overall, I wish the weapon was more useful than it is, and I really want to be able to rank it higher, but I just can't. Nicholas Gonzalez recommends the Coated Sword for Faith builds. This weapon is alright in my opinion. The Straight Sword moveset is pretty good, the Ash of War has a long range, and goes through shields. I don't find the whole going through shields to be very useful, as only a few invaders slash hostile NPCs use shields, and the ability is fairly easy to dodge or punish in PvP, cause the windup is kinda long and it's pretty obviously telegraphed. The other thing is that, e is that not a lot of PvPers use shields anyway, and after the first time that they try to use the shield and it doesn't work, they're gonna realize that it goes through shields, so they're gonna stop trying to use the shield on it. Anyways, it has only faith scaling and deals no physical damage, only holy damage. This makes sense lore-wise considering the blade has no physical form, it's just a beam of light. But out of all the damage types, holy is the worst. Because most bosses have it as their highest resisted type of damage. Anyways, 
Fox recommended me to use two Gargoyle Twin Blades with Bleed and do only jumping attacks in PvP. Only. Alright, uh, alright, let's, let's try this. I don't like it very much. So, I went to the Great Jar instead. Now, I'm gonna share with you guys this fun fact about the Great Jar. If you play in online mode, these three NPCs actually use random builds of players who have beaten the Great Jar encounter. So if you got this talisman, there's a chance that you've been one of the knights that another player had to fight. So yes, these do build up bleed really fast, but I'd imagine if you were fighting real players, you'd get curb stomped if you did only jumping attacks. DJ Damage, great name by the way, suggests Malaketh's Black Blade. This is an awesome looking Faith Greatsword, one of my favorite designs in the game. However, the weapon art takes a long time to start up, and most bosses will be able to stagger you out of it before you get to the big AoE slashes. But I feel like this issue would have been fairly easy to fix. Why not just make the weapon a stance type weapon like the Sword of Night and Flame? Have it so that holding down L2 causes you to go into a stance, then doing the heavy attack as you do what the ability is now, and then have the light attack have the weapon do the incantation black blade that you can get from the Remembrance. If this one change was made it would really improve the weapon as it would have some range capability. And for our final suggestion, Edward Hubbs suggests the Thunder Ash of War on a Keen Guardian Sword Spear. I love this comment because it's so blunt and to the point. He even specified the weapon, the Ash of War, and the infusion to use. It just says that, nothing else, not I suggest or you should, it just says it outright and he put a period on the end, making it sound like he's the Terminator, kind of. Use Thunder on a Keen Guardian Sword Spear. I'll be back. Anyways, this build is actually quite good, so it seems like he did know what he was talking about. You could really use the Ash of War on any weapon you want, not necessarily the Keen Guardian Sword Spear. Just give the weapon a Keen Affinity and it'll be a good dex build. I never use this Ash of War though because the icon is misleading. It looks like the icon for Ancient Dragon Lightning and Death Lightning, making me think it would be like those incantations where it spreads out all around you. But no, it's actually just the Honed Bolt incantation. That got me thinking, there's actually just a lot of Ash of War that are just incantations or sorceries, but on a weapon instead. Anyways, I really like this Ash of War and I like the incantation. It casts quick, it homes in on the enemy, and it can be cast repeatedly. Overall, this is a really solid build, and it really seems like this guy put thought into it. And he knew this was a good build. You just know. He said it outright. He knew that he had a good build in store for us. That's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed, consider leaving a like. If you want to see more videos in the future, you can hit the subscribe button to be notified when I post next. If you have any feedback, any ideas for future videos, or just want to say something to me, please leave a comment down below. My next video should be out really soon as a major update for Ultra Kill, my favorite FPS game, is coming out tomorrow, as of when I'm recording this, on the 16th. I might stream that on Twitch at twitch.tv slash realcalciumlad, so if you want, you could come hang out with me there, but it's possible that I might not stream it as I am having surgery that day, so just a quick word of warning. Anyways, thank you guys all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.